So I'll talk about for the next 10 minutes or 12 minutes, 10 minutes. I'll talk about Autoria, which is a, uh, um, a content creation platform for science. And some of the content I'm talking about is mostly research papers. Oh, sorry about that. Um, there you go. Uh, so it's a, a tool I built with my uh, co-founder, uh, Nathan Jenkins, uh, in the past few months. Uh, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to have authors and scientists and scholars write papers online in collaboration and produce documents that are online documents. So we're trying, in a way, if you're you know, talking to a pretty technical crowd, so we're doing something like GitHub, but for research papers. So before I start, let me just spend uh, one minute uh, talking about the motivation. Why are we doing this? Uh, we're doing this because uh, uh, I see around me, I worked in science for the past 10 years, I was at CERN uh, before, before my uh, PhD, and then I was in uh, um, sensor network research, and now I'm in astrophysics, and I've seen pretty amazing cutting edge research being done in science, but then when we write up the research, the tools that we're using to write up the research is tools like Word and uh, LaTeX, for example, that whether we like it or not, those tools were not built for the web, they were not built for collaboration. And what's even worse is that we're uh, packaging that, uh, all that information when we disseminate science in things like uh, um, in papers in PDF that look a little bit like that. So we lock them up in papers. And uh, the thing here is that if we want to change the way that we disseminate science, we need to change the way we write science. I also, uh, in this context, like to use a, a quote from Clifford Lynch, and I actually see him in the room, so that's fantastic. And I put this quote in two columns just to make it a little harder to read. And what Clifford says is that the publishers are doing digital and print publication, but the two are pretty much identical. And what you get online is actually just an image rendering, a photograph of a, of a paper. Uh, and what you get is like things like two columns. And it's crazy for me that we're still producing papers that are two column papers. I mean, they're not built for the web, so why are we doing that? Um, so that's pretty much the motivation uh, behind uh, doing a tool like Authoria, a tool that uh, in which you can write papers on the web, and those papers don't compile into PDF, they compile to the web, to HTML5. So the way we should write uh, research in the future, I hope. Um, that's the technical makeup of Adoria. Uh, most of the stuff we use is uh, uh, Ruby on Rails, and of course we're Git-based, so we have a, we're a Git machine in which you can uh, write papers. And I'm not gonna go through uh, some of the other stuff that we use, because I don't have the time to do that. Instead. Uh, I'll just say that if you want to follow us on Facebook or Twitter or just check out our page, that's authoria.com and you can go ahead and sign up. Now I'm going to spend the rest of the time here, which is probably six minutes, just uh, telling you a little bit how commenting and annotation fits into the Authoria framework. So let me just go back. All right, so that's our homepage, and you can go ahead and sign up if you want. Uh, on the first page, you pretty much get a, an idea of like all the different two, uh, uh, features that we offer. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sign in as myself, and hopefully this will work. I hope. Yeah, password is important. All right, so here I'm logged in. This is my uh, profile page, my uh, user page. And this is all the different papers that I'm working on. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new article. I could also import an article from uh, a LaTeX file, for example. But I'm just gonna go ahead and create one. And I'm gonna call it I annotate. Um, so I can choose to write a paper in LaTeX or in Markdown. We have more uh, formats uh, coming up, like Media Wiki and so on. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna stick to LaTeX, even though we're trying to move towards a, a fully Markdown uh, sort of platform. Um, I'm gonna create an article from a template so that we don't waste time writing LaTeX for now. And I'm gonna allow anyone to comment, not just my co-authors, but anyone in the public. And I'm gonna make it open science so that uh, you, can, you can see it as well. Um, so hopefully this works, it does work. So you'll see up here, the article is created. This is a rough draft, and it's an open science article. If you are online, and you probably, you're probably not, but you could actually go to authoria.com slash 1305, and you get to see this article. Uh, then that's the title up there, that's me, and I could add someone else. So for example, I'm just gonna add 
my another account that I have, and that uh, person, which is my alter ego, got an email saying that you know they can now collaborate on this article with me. Um, so the important thing here is that every single piece of text that you see here, every single element, is an actual file that is sitting on a, a Git, uh, an installation of Git on a Git repository. So I can do things like insert new ones. I can edit this one, and I'll show you how. Can delete it, and I can lock it so that when I start editing, editing it, no one else will touch it. And here on the right, you see that there's some commenting uh, features. So right now, there's zero comments on this section, and uh, I can add new comments. So because we every single article is built as independent files, we can have uh, element-based annotations and comments. Actually, it's comments. It's not really annotations for now. But if I double-click on this element, uh, editor opens up. And this is just an editor where I can write uh, LaTeX. So I can write, um, so if I just write hello at the end of it, and then I just click seven close, that's it. I get uh, hello in bold. So I'm not compiling to a PDF. Again, I'm just compiling right to the web, writing papers on the web. That's the idea. Um, you also might have noticed that when I double click on an element, you get a little thing up here that says AP. Those are my initials, which means that no one else can touch that section while I'm working on it. And this is how we're trying to move away uh, um, from the sort of Google Docs type of uh, writing papers. I have a feeling that scientists want to write papers in this way. I mean, I come from the astronomy and physics community, and scientists are that's the way that the uh, authoring practice works in science. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, then what else? I mean, if you have a look at this introduction thing, you'll see that there's a lot of mathematics in here. And all the formula equations just render OK in the browser. So hopefully we will get even more support for things like uh, tables and so on. Tables do render pretty well, though. If you see down here, this is a table. And it's a LaTeX table. And it just renders. We're now working with markdown tables and things like that. Uh, you will also notice that there's things like citations, and uh, there's a uh, bibliography file somewhere up here. It just looks like a BibTeX file, and you can just grab citations from there and cite them, and they will render citations. We also have something else which is pretty cool. You will uh, see a talk by Alberto Acomazzi from the ADS in, uh, in a little bit. And what we're trying to do is we're try working with the ADS to allow uh, citations from uh, URL. Uh, this should work like this. So if we just go to the ADS side, which is the uh, to-go place for astronomers that are, um, it's the largest digital library repository for astronomy. And I just look for a name in here. Michael Kurtz, for example. Uh, this is going a little slow. I guess I'll just go back to it. I don't know, here it is. So I can just uh, click on any of these papers, say this one, for example. And uh, if I'm reading this paper, I can just grab the URL from here and go back to Authoria. Here we are. And I can just cite that URL. And then I hope it works. Three, two, one. Yes, it worked. So I just get the citation right into my paper. I don't even have to worry about getting the BibTeX or, or not. Uh, here on the left, you see that we have an index, so you can just move stuff around. So if you want to, for example, move the introduction just above the abstract, you just move it, and there you go. You have it. Uh, you can drag and drop images onto the paper. So I'm going to try and make this happen. Uh, here we go. Uh, OK, this doesn't move. Let's try. So if I drag and drop an image onto the paper, you will see an image show up under the paper. Uh, it's important to see that every single image gets a folder. OK, one minute. Is that one or two minutes? One minute, OK. Every single image gets a folder. And we're trying to uh, save not just the image itself, but also the data underlying the image. And we have a news feed view, which of course shows everything I've done. So when I edited the abstract at the very beginning, that change that I made is over here. That's the hello. And I can undo that specific change uh, and so on. Now, uh, just one minute on comments. Uh, I told you that you know we have like, this commenting capability, so you can just go ahead and we can create a new comment in the introduction, for example. We say hello, another hello, 
We can make it private or uh, anonymous as well. And the important thing is that we can actually write LaTeX into the comment. So I could, for example, grab a little bit of LaTeX from here and even citations. And I put in the comment and comment, and that comment shows up now, and the LaTeX is included in the comment. Uh, one other thing before I'm done, I, for example, can uh, highlight a piece of text, for example, this one, and then add a new comment. Uh, let's do a different one, actually. Yeah, this one. And now, yeah, if I go to a secret page, we still haven't done much with it, but if we go to the secret page, you will see that we're actually uh, saving also the commented text. We also say what's com what comes before and after. Uh, we're not doing anything with it right now, but very soon we'll be adding um, uh, highlight text um, level annotations and comments.